not I aided this book for so many reasons. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about The Power by Naomi Alderman, a book that I hate. So yeah, let's dig into all the reasons I don't all the reasons I don't like this book. So first of all, the end of the book should really have been the beginning of the book because Alderman is just presenting you the story of all the power came into place. And you know that something big is going to come because it's like uh, at the beginning of the chapter is like 10 years ago, 9 years ago, six, no, it's 6 years to go, 9 years to go. And you expecting something big and that is going to be like the final chapter or the chapter before the final chapter that you're going to be blown away. And then to just like let you know that there's big war that's going to come and it's the end. And you're like, uh, oh, okay. And I'm pretty sure that this book doesn't have a sequel. Note that I would read it, but um, why do that? I hate it when books have open ending. I don't even consider that an open ending. I consider that as a, I didn't want to do my job until the end kind of thing, rather than it's an open ending on purpose. So. Yeah, first reason I hate this book. Then we come to the biggest reason I hated this book is what Alderman did with her female characters. So at first I was really happy because the female characters use their powers to protect themselves against rape, against violence, and I thought it really showed like a woman here on this earth on in the twentieth first century I've been raised to be like rather passive um, just to protect themselves not to be violent or aggressive and I thought it was like a good reflection on society and how we're raising women and you kind of through like the first hundred page you're kind of wondering why they're not more violent why they don't you know enjoy more their power or take advantage of it but then they really do uh, because Alderman decides to turn all the female character like really badly and they do take advantage of their power just to do bad things, um, not good things. And it's like it's crazy to think that if women were to get, be given power they'd just be doing exactly the same bad things that men are doing right now to women. Um, which was kind of a little bit too simple for me. Of course, I can admit that there will be excesses uh, because with power some people uh, go crazy and they are corrupted and I was totally expecting to see some scenes that were written. Um, I was expecting to see them but to make all the book about it, so basically she transformed this world into reverse sexism where all women are bad and men are just becoming the the women of today's world where they are afraid um, to be raped and etc and they are afraid of of women in general because they just like doing bad things um and it is crazy to think that women would do that because again of how we've been raised like we have different things to bring to the table. Um, just giving the example of countries led by women during COVID-19 for example. Um, and also it makes me question Alderman's feminism because for me fem feminism is not about having the same as men, having like exactly the same rights, exactly the same power to then repeat men's behavior. No, it's like having those rights, having this power to just destroy completely the system we live in right now, which is bad for everyone, and then build a new foundation that, so that we are equal, all equal in it. Um, that is like, doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman, you will just be treated the same for whatever it is. And to imply that it's not what 
going to happen or that no one is going to strive for that in this world where women have the power is it's kind of sad it was kind of like oh it doesn't matter who has the power because in the end it's all going to be bad so don't even fight for it and i get that it's like a dystopia and it doesn't need to have like a a good ending but dystopia with like hopeful message have been done um so i was kind of disappointed by that and yeah that was my thought there but but yeah i was kind of really disappointed but oh yeah and uh at, at a moment she said like oh there's in this country i don't remember there is um a pope who is a woman and that's things i would have liked to see like more than in ascendance i would actually have like to see like oh where women did good things with their power versus okay all these other ones were bad because i think it would be like in this world like not all men are bad but there are enough men for it to to scare us and for us to to fight as feminists um and i think it would have been the same. I think that just using that for reverse sexism was not original idea. Like this, our idea had a lot of potential, and then it just kind of fell flat. So it's kind of disappointing. So yeah, even though I was expecting that to make all the female characters bad, it's not only an original. Um, it's also quite anti-feminist um yeah i would say anti-feminist um because to imply that if women had power it would all turn up to be the same uh, just that the power would have shifted from men to women is stupid i don't believe that to be true and i believe that ironically or paradoxically um this book gives lots of argument for the antagonist that Alderman created, which is Urban Dax. Um, because they can be like, yeah, they can turn around and be like, see what happens when we give power to women, they just do the same as us, and they just are hypocrite. Um, and it's kind of like something I have, even as feminism, that you know, we are called hypocrites for not protecting men enough. Um, I'm not going to enter in this situation. I don't think I need to prove myself to anyone, especially not men. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, it, it gives lots of rough argument for men who would be against equality between men and women. So for me, this book was not feminist, it was quite the opposite. Now, of course, there is a critique of society that I can see that, you know, as a man who would read this, maybe they would feel uncomfortable. But personally, I also felt uncomfortable reading this um, because all women turn out to be horrible and I don't want to live in a world where women rape, where women just do all the bad stuff that, that some men are doing right now. Um, um, but I can see oh she kind of highlighted and reversed the sexism just so that people can be like oh that's what women have to leave daily but I don't even think it would impact many men because I don't think many men would pick up the book in the first place I think it was targeted uh, to women mainly uh, so, so it's kind of weird but yeah and on that point like you will really get to see what women are experiencing through the only male character Tunde which would be the version of a woman in this in the horror world um who really start to get scared at night who is almost raped um um you have the woman experience through this character so it's and it's kind of the only moral character who tries to do good things so it was kind of the only character I was interested in. I completely was not interested into the other characters. And I kind of wish she would have explored more on 
girls who by seeing other power could really be used for bad things uh, didn't want the power she kind of explained that some of those girls don't want them and we kind of see it through the character of Jocelyn but the main reason she she turns that it's that she doesn't want this or not being able to control it because she cannot have a boyfriend <sighs> which again is like <laughs> so sexist I'm like can it just not be because she doesn't want to hurt people around her um which is kind of implied but then there's like a big passage of like oh my god she doesn't have a boyfriend and she finds a boyfriend well because then we see that also men can some men can also have the power um i wish to explore that more as well as exploring like i said before women who would use this for having good things happen in the end also not really in sync with the religious thing so eve or uh, ali i think it's ali that she's called uh, uh, because it's just uh Princess Mother Eve most of the time. Um, what's her name? Yeah, Ali. Um, and um, she hears like a religious voice that tells her what to do. And I'm not I'm not religious, so I don't know if it it seems like offensive to religious people. First of all, um, secondly, uh, it's supposed to be an holy holy voice i didn't see it. by the end it just feels like you feel me <laughs> i just love that out of like again it seems like she didn't want to do the work until the end she's kind of tired by the end of the book she's like eh, just let it <laughs> let it there um which was kind of funny <laughs> to be fair so another print that i really didn't like is that all the bad thing the raping, the coup d'etat, um, people manifesting, it's all concentrated and focused on the East versus the United States. And in the United States, they kind of control the power, they kind of put in place those camps where girls can help each other and to control it. Um, and then in the East, it's completely crazy and women are just being depicted as crazy, as doing bad things. There's like an old scene, really graphic, that you don't really know why it's there, just to highlight that a uh, woman became horrible. Um, and um, it all happens in the East, and almost nothing bad happens in the United States, like maybe one or two murder, but that's it. Um, and you're kind of wondering why. Also, the, f the fact that people who raped men, so in this book women who raped men, are depicted as crazy, as uncontrolled, as all kind of stuff. And it's again rape culture as its best. And I won't say that enough, but most rape victims know, know their, um, their rapist. Uh, they know who it is. It's doesn't happen on the back of an alley, it doesn't happen at night sometimes, it doesn't happen with guns most of the time. Uh, rape is something quite common and, should, and common, I, I forgot the word for it. It's quite a non-event, um, even if it is something big for victims, but it's not as depicted in literature in TV shows, most of the time it doesn't happen like that. And spreading this image again and again um, is bad for rape victims because then they're like, oh, but my rape was not like proper rape, so I can't say anything because I was, you know, just be like, because it is my boyfriend, so I can't really say it's raped or just because it happens at my house, so it's not really raped, like I was um agreeing to this or because in the middle of it you want to stop and you're like but i was okay for the beginning of it uh, but do all, in all the situations it still can be a rape um anyway and to spread that message in a book that is allegedly alleged uh, 
allegedly, did I pronounce that? <laughs> feminist. Um, it's just disgusting. It's just like, oh, well, can you not like reflect on your work and see that? And see that? <laughs> just see that. It, it shows like a lack of of empathy of for for victims. Um, um, yeah, I, I didn't like it that much and I will continue to highlight that in all the books I'm reading. No, I'm not saying that um, rape under the signature like so with a gun by a stranger in an uh, alley in the night cannot happen but it's like the one percent versus the 99 percent and I think we should talk about the 99 percent more so that victim can be like oh it does happen to other people and it's quite normal and I can also ask and I can also tell and ask for help and people will understand me and will not judge me for accepting it or because I was wearing this or that. Um, anyway, I'm <laughs> extend myself there, I kind of <laughs> next port. Also the thing that shocked me and it's been quite a while since I read this book now and it still shocks me. It was fucking mentored by Margaret Chatford. Um, she she says thank you to her in the acknowledgement of how she supervised the work. And like fucking Margaret Atwood read this and let it go to print. I'm like, why? What? 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 <laughs> and what I was saying earlier, like dystopia with a full message and positive message have been made, I was clearly referring to the end stale where it's really bad, the situation of women is really bad, but she ends the book with like, maybe there will be a rebellion and when women will get come together and raise against the system, things will change. Um, which is in the end a really positive message of about a really negative book, uh, which is still a dystopia. And I was kind of expecting to see the same at some point in, in this book. And all I had is what I've been telling you about, like things that I consider really anti-feminist that just support sexism and I was kind of disappointed by it and I, I read it until the end because I was really expecting like a shift in position, something, maybe in the end she would just let us on a sentence that would all make sense and it would be like whoa like I need to reread all the book now but no. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like I'm doubting Margaret Atwood now, which I really admire. Um, so, um, like, I'm, I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked about this. I'm like, ugh. I, I get this a critic of society that might be okay, but the overall message is, is too much of a women are bad. If you give them power, nothing will change. Uh, it's, it's too much for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still shocked. I'm still, I still cannot understand how oh, Atwood got her and in this, on this and let it go to print and it's why it was one of the reasons I picked up the book because I was like oh Margaret Atwood say positive things about it, it must be good. But no. Also the last part which is quite funny is there is no mention of feminism are the equivalent of what would be feminism in this world because there's if it's really reverse sexism and now women are kind of acting like men and men are acting like women like why they don't organize themselves between yeah between themselves to reclaim their rights and there is kind of with urban dogs like a fight that's going on but it's more like oh we need just to exterminate them before they kill us. It's, got, it's not like a kind of we need to uh, um, try to work together and we need to try to tell them like look we want rights, we want to be protected. Um, but I found, can, I found it funny but also found it funny that it's representing the world we live in today where people would just come at me, men, and be like, oh, but feminism isn't good because it doesn't protect men, uh, we get raped too, we go to prison unfairly, etc, etc. And I um, just find it so funny because I'm like, 
why don't you create support group? Why don't you ask for right? Why don't you do this and that? If it really matters to you, other response I will get is like, oh, but because if you do that, because we have all the privileges already, because generally this comment become, comes from white cis men, um, they say like they will be called misogynist. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and so like being feminist in this world is not easy. We get criticized all the time. People cannot wait to tell us why it is bad. And we are passing for men either all the time when we are not at all like really with and most of us are heterosexual and we have sex with men uh, so we are not eating them uh, just that you know it's kind of the same argument of black lives matter versus all lives matter we all know that all lives matter but right now black lives are in danger and it's all the same with women like we know that men's rights are as important as women's rights and that's what we are keep saying uh we're keeping we keep on saying um but the fact is women are most likely to get killed by men just for the simple fact that they are women so i think it's more important to treat that first um than men's problem uh, and by the way by solving women's issue with domestic violence abuse rape etc and by having really people being prosecuted not let out free it will enter and help men because men will see um, that it works and that they are listened to and then men who really do have problems will also come forward and be like I will be listened to like those women and I think that's what happened with I need to google it yeah I, I think it was it is what happens with Terry Crews uh, in the Me Too movement where all those women came uh, talked about abuse and everybody was like yes good and we support you and we're with you and then Terry Crews who is a man if you don't know <laughs> Uh, also came forward and said like this director or I don't remember but someone who works in the in the business in the industry also abused me um, and here's my testimony and nobody put that into question uh, everybody was like yeah good for you and upload and feminists were I think in the first rank or in the first no you call that like we're the first you know me as a feminist I was like yeah like that's what we need to see and that's what support for rape victim needs to look like, like not putting into question, but be like, we trust you and we want to help you. you um, anyway, I think it's so funny. Oh, it is the argument of men who are against feminism that we don't care enough about men. I'm like, feminism was created because you didn't care enough about women, but okay. <laughs> um, and also like in the meantime, like while we are not solving all your problems for you, uh, create support groups, create, re uh, write books about your problems and do do all of those stuff. And yeah, you will be criticized, but we are also criticized all the time, but we still do it because our lives are at stake. Uh, it's a question of life and death. I'm not even kidding. Uh, and this is why I'm a feminist. Um, to be told otherwise and why it's bad, it's just really tiring and I don't even know why I have to still fight that um, but yeah so I was kind of finding it funny that there was there was no mention of that in this book that we don't see men gathering together and come up with a plan not to kill women but more like to um, ask for the rights they deserve um, but since Alderman was uh, apparently ready from the beginning to paint a bad picture from A to Z, uh, why would I be surprised? <laughs> anyway, that's all the reason I hated this book. Um, I I put two out of five to this book because I'm still like, you know, I'm, I like the author still work for it. Uh, so lots of work went to it. The ID, the initial ID was really good. 
And it's one of the other reasons it made me pick the book, which by the way, if you don't know, it's just about a woman who gets this power that uh, that allows them to electrocute, electrocute men, what is it? They can inflict, uh, yeah, with a flick of the finger, they can inflict terrible pain, uh, which I kind of relate to electrocution. Um, and um, the idea was really good, lots of potential unexploded. <laughs> And she kind of have a meta, meta text at the beginning and the end of the book where she save herself a little, but not enough for me. Um, so yeah, I don't really have an anything good to say about this book. I'm sorry, I really wanted to like it. I really wanted to find it something worth it, and I didn't. So yeah, that's all for me. I think I talked for long enough as usual. So thank you if you listen to this point. Um, enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. No, it's on the weekend for you when you see this video. Enjoy your week. Uh, <laughs> and I'll talk to you soon. See you.